And um, in terms of the kind of music we play, it's definitely like Hoosier Hot Shots, um, Roy Smack, um, all the kind of vaudeville era music. Uh, Fletcher Henderson is just a great band leader, um, one of my heroes. I mean, as far as like music that inspires me and, and um, that I wish I could sound like, uh, would be like the, the Cheap Suit Serenaders mm -hmm. and Django Reinhardt. Who'd you grow up with? Rita? Um, I grew up, the Talking Heads were huge for me, the B-52s were huge for me, Devo. And then in terms of music that I listened to, when I was growing up I listened to the Weavers a lot which were a 50s folk songs, and then other than that I had a kind of a, a blackout on, on all like rock or pop music. Nice. And I didn't get out of that, I mean this is in the 80s, so I didn't listen to anything popular at all. And then until I went to college, and then college I got completely immersed in all the weirdest, weirdest music possible. At my college, the well, radio... What was, what, was what was some of the weirder? Oh, you know, like Ronaldo and the Loaf, the, um, um, you know, the Butthole Surfers, the Residents, I mean, all that kind of stuff. Pick up your hat, close up your flat, get out, get under the moon. Get out, get under the moon. What about the whole, um... The whole dramatic component, you know, you guys put a lot of, you know, a lot of different characters and kind of voices and, and kind of put on a little bit more of a show than, than say, you get from, from your conventional, you know, you know, music group. Where, where does that come from? For me, I think that's from um, Wavy Gravy and Improvisation. Now, after college, I studied theater and worked at a summer camp called Camp Winter Rainbow, run by Wavy Gravy, who was... Uh, uh, kind of like a, a hippie prophet and uh, also a comedian and, and a clown and so I had studied circus and the clown and theater and so that all kind of ties in so when I'm doing a song you know the whole idea is not only just to to sing it but also to like perform it you know and that's a very old that's a vaudeville idea too you know you know, most bands these days, they look very grim, they look very serious, and they, they absolutely do not smile, that's the rule. And uh, so we're about, you know, breaking a rule. Uh, um, big eyebrows is another idea that Frank Zappa talked about, when you put, put the eyebrows on a song, that means like, Make it, make it big. Make it, you know, like make put more into it. And you put more into it. You put more into a song, and more, more comes out, right? Um, how's uh, how's uh, performing together as husband and wife? Is that, um, or it's are the they, most they, they beautiful just, experience <laughs> in the world. <laughs> I should probably ask you that one. <laughs> separately, maybe off camera. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. It's great. Sometimes it, it adds yeah. some extra humor uh, because, like, he might say something that pisses me off, uh -huh. and it's really. And you can react like a wife as opposed to another. Well, it's it's person. impossible not to react. <laughs> I mean, for me at least, it's it's really hard not to react. So, you know, I might tell him that I'm gonna kick his ass right there on stage, you know, it's, it's, it adds some humor. Cool.
about Psalm 2 or 3, we kind of die, everything that was built up just burns off and we get to the immediate moment and it's good. Like any of the stuff that we were carrying around, even if we were grouchy at each other, snapping at each other, but second song or third song will like, you know, be in the zone with each other. What, what was the inspiration to pick that up and make that kind of the centerpiece of the, of the V-Tones? My stepdad was a, well, played folk, sing, folk songs and a folk singer, played 12-string guitar, mm -hmm. and he also had a very uke around. So I had a, a uke, you know, but I didn't really know anything about uh, ragtime, swing, jazz stuff. Huh. Um, then when we got to Charleston, um, we met Sandy and she really, you know, turned it on. For mm -hmm. us. And it, the ukulele was really big in the 20s because you can do funky um, jazz chords with the uke without too much problem. There's just four strings and four fingers. So, oh, yeah. you know, it's, it's, uh, you, right. you can do pretty subtle stuff on it without, uh, without, too, much, uh, without too, too much effort. You know? What do you guys think about the decline of, uh, of attention to arts, particularly music, in, in the school system? Um, the kind of, you know, I, and I understand that, you know, that's kind of disappearing more and more every year and there's a lot less, you know, focus and resources directed towards, you know, teaching kids. It's a cry and shame. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, well, everything's tied together, you know, just kind of like, Super capitalism, where where everything is controlled by these giant titanic dinosaurs that like you know just overwhelm everybody with the, with the just millions of dollars that they can throw at at anything um, and wipes everything out. And yeah. so like who has a who has a, we've got plenty of money for stuff we don't need. You know, if you want coke machines in every single hallway, they can do that for you, right? If you want to you know blow up some you know. Remotistan, you can do it. You can send a million dollars over there. But if you want to teach kids how to like play the piano, or if you want to like teach kids what you know history is, forty years from the past or something. Oh, nobody seems to have resources for this. Yeah. So it's ludicrous. It's yeah. totally insane. Thanks very much, folks.